El Paso, Texas, from now on your name is Edom. I gave you every opportunity in the world to accept me and honor me as a prophet from God, and all you did was continually reject me. Instead of loving me, you hated me. I told you that if you reject me one more time, no Christian would ever step foot in El Paso again. And I meant it. When you rejected me, you rejected my father, which showed me that you really are a land of wickedness, where the devil reigns, and for that you shall be known as Edom for all eternity. And to think, I had even given you the opportunity to be the very first republic of New Jerusalem so that you could be a beacon to the nations of the world. But because of your lack of faith, you will now always be under my wrath and known as the very first place I turned into a wasteland. Keep praying in the closet and let the homosexuals out has been the moral standard of this world for way too long. How does the beast come out of the abyss and kill the two witnesses? He does it by convincing the Jews and Arabs, Muslims, that they are not God's children. We wouldn't need to be under grace if there was no law. There is still the law, because if there wasn't, why would we need grace? When we were under the curse of the law, it was because there was a law. We are now under the grace of the law only because there is a law. When Jesus came, the new covenant added grace to the already existing law, as well as make some of the other parts of the law unnecessary for us to keep having to do, because he does, did them for us. These other parts are not void, they just are already being done. The law of God, with its curses, has been replaced by the perfect law of Christ with grace. Only a few have found the gate and road that leads to life. But thank God they have shown the rest of it where it is. Will it be the Garden of Eden or the Desert of Eden for you? I know some of you will think I'm full of it. If you mean full of holiness, then I agree with you. God is going to win no matter what. He is either going to win through me or win by destroying me. Either way, he wins. Of course, I would prefer to be the vessel he does this through instead of the vessel he does this to. But that is his choice as long as he wins. This is a game. However, I use the word game loosely. I only do it because it puts me in the right frame of mind of trying to win instead of lose. Even though I use the word game, I can assure you it is the most serious work 
have ever done. Being the Messiah King is a very fulfilling position. No other job in the world could give me the complete satisfaction I received from doing it. This book is written with the purpose of building God's kingdom, judging the world and its people, and proving that Jesus has returned. In addition to these, this book should also give you the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and inspiration you need to give God the praise and worship He deserves. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord Almighty, because it is only through His Spirit that we have the might and power we need to bring down the mighty strongholds of the world. No physical rapture caught up means raised from our fallen state in the clouds means to be glorified in the air means in the spirit those in the afterlife have already learned of their divinity and now it's your turn to be. you are saved when you accept Christ you are not saved when you reject Christ if you accept Christ and then later reject Christ, you will be unsaved again. If your doctrinal beliefs include God gave us free will, once saved, always saved, getting saved isn't about feelings. The law is void. The Bible is literal, and things like the rapture, then you are so far off the truth, it isn't even funny. I'm going to ask you to use some real discernment, not the kind of discernment you use, which really isn't discernment at all. Real discernment is not the kind that looks at what a person says and then says it's wrong because you discern that it doesn't match what you believe, teach, or preach. Real discernment is when you hear something and then compare it to the scripture to see if it is true or not. Comparing it to the scriptures correctly means to look at the scriptures from all angles so you know how they may be applied. After you've looked at the scriptures in every context, while being under the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you need to discern if there is some merit or not to what is being said. If there is, then study and meditate on the Word of God some more until you come to a final conclusion of whether to accept or reject a teaching. And even then, in what context are you accepting or rejecting it?